to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Proverbs chapter 1, verse number 7. We welcome you today to our study of the wonderful and practical book of Proverbs. We want you to pause just, if you don't have your Bible, we want you to pause for just a moment, locate that, find that, and have it handy as we're going to look to the Word of God today in our study of this wonderful book. As always, we want you to know that today's lesson is being brought to you by individual members and congregations of the Church of Christ in your area. The Lord's Church in your area would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly, whether that's on Sunday morning or Sunday night or Wednesday for Bible study. You will find people there who love God, who are concerned about the souls of men. Maybe you've got a Bible question about God's Word or about the plan of salvation or the church or whatever it may be. You'll find friendly people there who'd be happy to sit down and discuss God's Word with you in a kind and loving way. And so we encourage you, check out the Lord's Church in your area. You won't be disappointed that you did. Also, here at the Gospel of Christ, we'd love to help you in your journey to know God and His Word better. And so we encourage you to check out our website, thegospelofchrist.com. From there, you can access all of our material free of charge. We have audio lessons, video lessons, transcripts, study questions, written material, just a wide variety of good Bible study material, and it's all available to you free of charge from thegospelofchrist.com. And if you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson, whether that be on audio or video, you can go to our website, Go to our digital download form, our media request form. You can uh, ask for a digital download, and you can receive that instantaneously, or we could send you a CD or DVD in the mail as well. And as always, in our fast-paced world today, we encourage people to check out the Gospel of Christ app and the respective play stores. It's a great way to study God's Word on the go in our fast-paced world today. We're excited today about our study in the book of Proverbs. And as we said, we hope you got your Bible. Have it turned to the book of Proverbs itself. We begin by talking about what is the key or the principal idea in the book of Proverbs. Proverbs is all about wisdom and practical advice for everyday living. Two key verses, Proverbs 1 verse 7 says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Key thing, if you want to be wise, you want to know God, you want to be the type of person who's ready to receive God's instruction, fear the Lord. Respect, reverence, give God the honor He deserves, open your heart and your mind to His will and His way. And then I love the wording of Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7. Turn in your Bible to Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7 with me. This is what it's all about. Proverbs 4, verse 7 says this. Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom, and in all you're getting, get understanding. And so what's Proverbs all about? Wisdom and getting God's wisdom into my everyday life so that I can live a life that honors God. And so key verses kind of clue us into that. And of course, the key word to the book of Proverbs would be the word wisdom. James teaches us in James 1 verse 5 that we are to pray for wisdom. Proverbs teaches us how to take that, that desire, that, that prayer request, and gain that wisdom for everyday life through the practical teachings in the book of Proverbs. And so let's take just a moment to kind of define what we're talking about with wisdom. When we say wisdom, 
What do we mean by that? Wisdom is the ability to apply knowledge successfully, practically, to everyday life. Wisdom is different than knowledge. Knowledge, book smarts, uh, intelligence, understanding things. Wisdom is different in that you can have all the facts but not know what to do with them. Wisdom is the ability to take those truths, those facts, those things that are right from the Word of God and insert them tomorrow in the right place in my life. It's the ability to know how to use what you know and what you understand. And so we think of wisdom as practical ability to apply God's truth to tomorrow. Now, as you think about the book of Proverbs, there is a, a companion book in the New Testament. Proverbs and James kind of go hand in hand in that they both talk about wisdom, both talk about everyday living for a, a, a godly person, and both offer so much practical advice to, advice to help us in this life. And so in the next couple of lessons. We're going to talk about some themes in the book of Proverbs. Proverbs is, is unique in the, let's say, unlike Matthew, where we begin with the, the birth of Jesus and follow kind of chronologically through his life and follow the story chronologically until his death and resurrection. Proverbs is different in that it's not a, a chronological or a story of anything necessarily. Proverbs is more of a, a topical approach to different subjects. And so we're going to look in the book of Proverbs topically at some of the main themes and main ideas and see what wisdom we can gain for everyday living. Let's talk first of all about the principal character in the book of Proverbs, and his name is the fool. The fool is mentioned and talked about and derided more in the book of Proverbs than any other individual because he should know, he could know, he ought to know, but he chooses not to gain wisdom and instruction like he should. And so God gives us this advice so that we don't make foolish choices. Let me, let me share with you two or three passages about the fool from the book of Proverbs. Open to Proverbs chapter 12, verse number 15, and I want you to see one of the key things about the fool is he trusts himself more than anybody else. Look in Proverbs chapter 12, verse number 15. The Bible says, The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he who heeds counsel is what? You ever known anybody like this? You, they could be doing something wrong. They could be doing it backwards. They could be doing even something that's nearly dangerous. And you could say to them, hey, slow down there just a minute. L let me show you a, a, a better way. Let me help you with that. And boy, just set them off. They don't need any help. They don't need anybody to tell them how to do it. They don't need your advice. The fool trust in his own way. He's the, he thinks, the, here's what separates the fool from the wise person. The fool thinks he's got everything figured out. The wise man knows he needs help and he's willing to listen to good advice. And so the Bible teaches us not to trust in ourselves. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart Lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge Him in all your ways, and He will direct your path. I, I'm foolish when I think I've got all the answers to all the questions. My way is the best way, and nobody can tell me anything. Do you know anybody like that? Have you ever been in that position? Well, friend, godly wisdom reminds each of us that's not correct. I don't have it all figured out. Jeremiah 10 verse 23 said in the long ago, Jeremiah said, O Lord, I know the way of man's not in himself. It is not in man who walks to direct his own steps. I need God. I need God's advice. I need the advice, the encouragement, and the wisdom of those who've gone on before me, those who have lived longer than I have. And so what's wrong with the fool? He trusts way too much in himself and he won't listen. 
Proverbs 15, verse 5. The second thing we learn about the fool that, that leads to his downfall or his demise is, even when people try to tell him, he just won't hear instruction. Notice Proverbs 15, verse number 5 with me. The Bible says this, A fool despises his father's instruction, but he who receives correction is prudent. Uh, you can imagine trying to tell your son something. Maybe he's never done that, and you're trying to teach him. He doesn't know really how to do that, or he's maybe doing it in a way that's not effective or maybe even dangerous. And you pull him aside. You try to tell him. You try to show him. He just won't have it. He won't listen to it. A fool despises his father's instruction. The fool, not only does he trust himself too much, the fool won't listen. It's as though when people try to tell him, he puts both fingers in his ears. Friend, I've got, I need to learn to listen to God first and let others give me advice as well. I, I, I love the attitude of John's disciples in Luke chapter 1, Jesus' disciples, Lord, teach us. That's the mindset I want. I need to listen. I need to be willing to learn, willing to be taught, to study, to grow. I don't, I don't have it all figured out. And we all need to have that mindset and that attitude. And so part of the fool's demise is he trusts in the wrong person and he just won't listen when people try to tell him something to help improve himself or anything in life. What else do we know about the fool? The fool can't be disciplined or corrected. Look in your Bible in Proverbs chapter 12, verse number 1. Look at what the Bible says here. Whoever loves instruction loves knowledge. But here's the fool. He who hates correction is stupid. It's as though he could learn. It's out there. All he's got to do is take it, but he chooses not to do that. He can't be corrected or disciplined. The one who loves correction, that's the one who's going to learn. A friend, if somebody can help you, can help me, can correct maybe something I'm doing wrong to help me in my life, that person's not my enemy. They're my friend. But he who loves that, they're going to learn, but the fool, the one who won't take that, the Bible says that's living in a life of stupidity. And so we think about this individual, and let's make that practical. Let's ask ourselves today, am I like this man, or have I learned from my mistakes? Who do I put my trust in, myself or God and others who can help me? Am I willing to hear instruction when somebody's trying to teach, or do I think I've got it all figured out? Can someone correct and discipline me, or am I too haughty and proud to, to take that correction and instruction? And so the encouragement is, let's not be foolish. Let's realize life is a lifelong learning process where we all need to grow and develop. Then there's a second major thing in the book of Proverbs that it has much to say about, and that's the subject of anger. And let me ask you, do you ever get angry? Jesus got angry in John chapter 2, and that anger in and of itself was not sinful. But does your anger ever get the best of you? Do you ever say or do things when you get angry that are not right? What wisdom does the book of Proverbs give us to help this in my practical life? Open your Bible, if you would, to Proverbs chapter 14, verse number 29. What advice do we learn from the book of Proverbs? Proverbs 14, verse 29 teaches us we must learn to control our anger. Here's what the Bible says. He who is slow to wrath has great understanding, but he who is impulsive exacts folly. Reminds me a lot, like we said, of the book of James. The Bible says in James 1, verses 20 and 21, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. He who is slow to anger, that's the one who God uh, singles out as having wisdom. And so I've got to learn to control my anger. You know, and, and this is contract. The one who's slow to anger is contrasted with the person who's impulsive. Let, let's think about the difference. Somebody who's impulsive. What's that person like? You do something wrong to them, and before you know it, they've already acted 
or done something before they've thought about it. And maybe something that they wish they could take back, just act off of impulse almost. And then the person who's slow to anger, that doesn't mean he doesn't get angry, but it doesn't get the best of him. He doesn't act immediately based off of that anger. And so I've got to be slow to wrath, slow to get there, and slow in reacting when I do get angry. And do that in a deliberate, thought-out way. Again, anger in itself, we're not saying that's sinful or bad, but we've got to control it, not let it control us. All right, how then do you diffuse an angry person in an angry situation? Do you ever get around anybody who's angry? And maybe when they're angry, they're not fun to be around, and, and that person just kind of flies off the handle. What are one of some of the ways you can diffuse that? Look in your Bible at Proverbs 15, verse number 1. The next time you're around somebody and they've got anger problems, try this. The Bible says, A soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. You, you're around an angry person and you want to make that worse? When they're angry and they're talking out of anger, you get right in there and mix it up with them. You, you stir it up, you poke the bear, and you're going to find out what it's like. But listen to these words. A soft answer turns away wrath. If somebody's angry and they're acting out in their anger and, and, and their angers get the best of them, what's the best thing you can do? Get angry with them and holler and yell too? No, it only makes it worse. Soft answer. Diffuse the situation. Calm down. Don't get angry. Keep yourself under control and don't let that get the best of you. And that's one of the ways you can deal with anger or somebody who has anger issues. And then let me mention this to you thirdly. And this is something that's not always possible, but as much as you can, avoid those type of people in your life. Try to avoid people who've got anger issues. Look at Proverbs chapter 22. You want to have a, a life that's healthier and happier and doesn't have as much stress? Cut out the toxic and the angry people in your life. Look at Proverbs 22. Notice what the Bible says in verse 24 through 25. Make no friendship with an angry man and with a furious man do not go, lest you learn his ways and set a snare for your soul. Don't make friends with angry people because that's liable to lead you down a path you don't want to go. Don't make friends with them, the Bible says. Don't, 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 don't learn their ways. They're liable to set a trap for you. Don't go down that path. And so as much as you can, those type of people, angry people are not the people that you need in your circle of influence. I understand from time to time, we all have to be around people like that who've got anger issues. But the, least, the less I can bring that into my, my life, the, the more I can cut that out of my life, the fewer of those people I've got in my circle of influence, that toxic person, get them out of your life if you want to find the joy and the peace and the happiness. And, and if somebody's dealing with anger or has anger issues, let's try to help them. Let's try to encourage them. Let's try to see what's going on that's making them so angry. And of course, the greatest thing, is to help people see Jesus, the hope of heaven, the joy of Christianity, talk to them about the Lord and bring them to the point where they can learn about Him and His grace. All right, let's talk about another idea. A third theme that you will find throughout the book of Proverbs that is such practical advice has to do with the use of alcohol or drinking. Proverbs has a lot to say on this subject. And the proverb writer, he reminds us of several truths. And the first is, I want you to see that, that wine has a certain allurement, but it's not a good one. Look in Proverbs chapter 23, and I want you to see what the Bible says in verses 29 through 35. Beware of the enticing, alluring nature of this deadly, deadly poison. Proverbs 23, verse 29. Who has woe? Who has sorrow? Who has contentions? Who has complaints? Who has wounds without cause? Who has redness of eyes? Here's the answer. Those who linger long at the wine. 
Those who go in search of mixed wine, do not look on the wine when it's red, when it sparkles in the cup, when it swirls around smoothly. Why not? At the last, it bites like a serpent, stings like a viper. Your eyes will see strange things. Your heart will utter perverse things. Yes, you'll be like one who lies down in the midst of the sea or like one who lies at the top of the mast saying, they've struck me, but I was not hurt. They've beaten me, but I did not feel it. When shall I awake that I may seek another drink? Listen to this now. Do, here's what the proverb, here's God's wisdom, okay? Do not look at the wine when it sparkles in the cup, when it swirls about smoothly. Why not? Because that pretty, alluring, enticing picture there isn't the whole story. What's it really like? At last, it bites like a serpent. It stings like a viper. That, 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 that wine that looks so alluring and enticing is like a snake just waiting to bite you. My friend, if I knew it was a snake from the outset, I sure wouldn't have reached out and grabbed it, would you? That's the whole idea. Who has woe? Who has sorrow? Who has contentions? Who has wounds without cause? He who lingers long at the wine. And so the proverb writer says, don't let the allurement of it trick you. It's a deadly poison that can affect you in ways that you may not even realize at first. And then, as it relates to alcohol, the proverb writer also tells us, don't get caught up running with the drunken crowd. Look in Proverbs chapter 23. Proverbs chapter 23, notice what the Bible says in verses 20 and 21. Do not mix with wine bibbers or with gluttonous eaters of meat, for the drunkard and the glutton will come to poverty, and drowsiness will clothe a man with rags. Don't mix with wine bibbers. Don't run with the drunken crowd. Why? Their lifestyle, their attitude, their laziness. That's liable to run off, rub off on you. And so not only am I warned how deadly and dangerous it is, I'm also warned. Those are people I don't need in my life. I'm going to be tempted. Their moral problems may affect me, have the potential to rub off on me. And then, friend, listen carefully to me. The only one who wins when a person gets involved in wine and alcohol and drunkenness is the devil. Wine stands in the background and mocks you. When it stands in the background and makes fun of you with every drink you take. How do we know that? Turn in your Bible to Proverbs chapter 20. Look at the picture here. Proverbs chapter 20. Look at what the Bible says in verse number one. Wine is a mocker. Strong drink is a brawler. Here's our key word. Whoever is led astray by it is not wise. Wine's a mocker. It's, it makes a mockery. It's making fun of your lifestyle. Strong drink, a brawler. It's going to put you, you ever heard him say, he likes to fight when he gets drunk. Well, it's, it's making you do things that are just laughable. People make fun of you and laugh at you. It can make people a mean person. But listen to this. Remember, Proverbs is all about wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. The Bible says, wine's a mocker, strong drink is a brawler. Whoever is led astray by alcohol is not wise. Friend, let me mention something to you. Sometimes people say, well, I can have just a little. Friend, it doesn't, I know people personally, I know people personally who started with a beer after work or at lunch, who started with a drink socially here or there. They couldn't just take one. It's like the old potato chip commercial. Nobody can eat just one. The idea that you can just have a drink here or there and that's not going to hurt you is one of the biggest lies that has ever been told because you always want one more and you always want one more. And then you're in the state of the individual that we've talked about. And so when we think about alcohol, when you think about drinking, do not be drunken with wine. There's God's command. Ephesians 5 verse 18. Here's God's command. Be sober. 
completely, and the idea of being sober, 1 Peter 5, 8, is complete abstinence from alcohol. Be sober. Be vigilant. Why? Your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he made of our. I understand as well as you do that Peter's talking about being sober and alert spiritually. But friend, can I be sober and alert spiritually if I'm a little tipsy physically? The two just don't go hand in hand. And so our encouragement today is avoid alcohol. It is not going to profit you. It's not something that's going to help you be a better or more godly person. And so today, as we're thinking about the book of Proverbs, let's think about wisdom. Let's make practical application to our life today. Am I living a life like the fool who won't listen, who won't learn, and who can't be corrected? Or is my heart open to God and His Word to learn? Am I in control of my emotions? Or do I get angry and just fly off the handle? And do I have angry people in my life who are affecting me in a negative way? And then, friend, do I give in and imbibe alcohol when I know that's leading me down a bad path? Man, if you could just stop and think. If I asked you today, you think of anybody in your family that's got an alcohol-related problem, I guarantee you, Every one of us could say, yep, uncle so-and-so, cousin so-and-so, my best friend. They, families are tore up by it. Friend, don't give in to that. Realize, although it may swirl in the glass and be sparkling and every beer commercial makes it look like you're going to be popular and cool and wealthy, they don't tell you that's the same person laying in the ditch, vomiting, or in a car wreck. That's the picture of it, really. And so realize that's not the way God wants you to be. Let's each do this. Let's have a heart where we want to open ourselves to God and His Word. Let's give our attention to things like we find in the book of Proverbs. And friend, let's live with, with let's live above the world. Let's not get caught in Satan's trap. Let's have the wisdom God wants us to have. We hope you'll join us next time as we'll study more from the book of Proverbs. Today's closed captions are brought to you by Christian Family Bookstore in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We encourage you to visit thechristianfamilybookstore.com for all your Christian book needs. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ with its whole aim to take the Gospel to the whole world. We do that through TV, Internet, free media, and streaming. Our motto truly is to take the whole gospel to the whole world, and we believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious programs today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call 844 844- Six Gospel. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the gospel of Christ.